In this video, I will be reviewing all of the modern One Piece films, finishing off Strong World and getting stuck in on some truly breathtaking films and stories from Film Z all the way to 2019 Stampede, with the added bonus of reviewing what appeared to me to be the strangest film in One Piece's extensive catalog, the 3D film entitled Straw Hat Chase, which, while looking like a PlayStation 3 game, was actually infinitely better than the train wreck I thought it was going to be. Oh, and also, by the time this video ends, I'll have finished all of the One Piece films. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. And to reward myself, I'm gonna make this year's last video a Dragon Ball one where I review the Moro arc. And so, to cap off my One Piece journey for 2020, I present you with one of my most positive reviews to date. I'm Totally Not Mark, and these are my first impressions of, thoughts on, and review for the surprisingly sound, stupidly effective, and superbly animated modern One Piece film collection. Yo! One Piece is the best series I've ever read in my life. First impressions of, we're crazy and everything. One thing I want to say from the outset here is that I understand that these are films that most One Piece fans are familiar with or have seen. And so because of this, I understand that these are often discussed and compared. And so today I will be sharing with you all which of these modern films I thought was the best as well as my favorite overall. All of these films, Strong World, Film Z, Film Gold, and Stampede were made with Eiichiro Oda directly involved. And to be perfectly frank, you can tell. As someone that spent a borderline pathological amount of time reading the One Piece story this year, one thing I've gained an appreciation for is the sort of magic Oda likes to inject into the worlds and stories he creates. All of these films are heads and shoulders above the earlier One Piece films with the only two that challenge them being movie 4 and movie 6 in my mind. Though none of those feel as distinctly One Piece as these specific modern films. Whether it be Strong World or Film Z's fully integrated and fleshed out characters, Film Goal's superlative world building, or Stampede's wall to wall action and character interactions, looking at these four films there's clearly something here for any breed of One Piece fan. So, let's dive into the first of these Oda films by finishing off my review of Strong World. Strong World is easily one of the strongest films I'll be discussing in this video. Last week, I discussed the first half of this film and what I loved about it, from its animation to its setup to its dialogue and cinematography. But really, that was just an appetizer because the first half is effectively all set up. If the first half of this film is Water 7, then the second half is Any's Lobby, because it is all climax. Something I was worried about going into this film was the significantly longer running time it boasted. Almost half an hour longer than most films like Film 4 and Film 6 were, and even longer than the vast majority of the earlier ones. But it really comes to in a surprisingly satisfying finish that felt more One Piece than anything I had seen up until this point. Helped incredibly by the outstanding voice work of Mayumi Tanaka, this film's second half essentially explores the aftermath of the beatdown at the hands of this film's fantastic antagonist, Shiki. Overall, this movie deals with Nami being the goal. They are there to rescue her after Shiki's declared that she is his navigator. And what's interesting is that very fight for Nami takes place in the very middle of the film. And for those of you that have followed along with this series, you'll know that I've mentioned this midpoint cutoff trope in narrative before. This is a writing technique used to help with pacing and to create tension moving into the second half of the film and the final act. And so, despite the goal throughout this two-hour film remaining the exact same throughout, there's more than enough turbulence to play with your emotions and to keep you entertained, with the midpoint defeat at the hands of Shiki acting as a perfect alley-oop for Act 3 to slam dunk this big finish. And boy, does it slam dunk this big finish. With Nami leaving behind a message for her defeated friends to hear once they come to, reinvigorating us and the crew to storm Shiki's castle in the sky, saving Nami and to stop them from destroying the East Blue. And boy, do they make good on that promise. As I mentioned, the second half of this film, despite a few moments here and there showing Nami making her moves to free herself, largely is centered around the incoming conflict between this monstrous Shiki and the lovable Straw Hat crew. And one thing I think this movie gets right more than any other is the One Piece walk. And <laughs> Something I'd like to share with you all is that prior to reading through One Piece, I had never experienced a hero walk on the scale of what Aichiro Oda offers in his story here. And that's not because any other film or anime I watched lacked them. Not even close, there were tons that included hero walks. But within this film, as Luffy and the Straw Hats marched their way into the HQ of Shiki, bathing in a white light and coming off as massively intimidating to those around them, it helps to reaffirm this nostalgic side of a viewer. Because we all know where all of these 
these oddball and outcast characters are from and where their strengths and weaknesses lie. We've seen them go from being jokes that no one recognizes to being notorious around the world. And that's a feeling, for me at least, that is unique to One Piece. Oftentimes, anime and film will create these hero walks with really little behind it simply because they think it looks cool. And, you know, it does. It does the job on a surface level. But what One Piece, however, does is this hero walk with enough substance to make you tearfully look on like a proud mother because you've seen them all grow up. It's a ridiculously sad satisfying feeling, simply because you get the satisfying cool walk that aesthetically looks great, but it has this visceral substance that One Piece so fervently offers time and time again. And the battle that ensues here after the dramatic walk is equally fantastic, with the subordinates of Shiki having already been characterized in a way that isn't just the brooding tough guy, we have an effeminate gorilla and a blue mime whose shoes make fart sounds whenever he takes a step. Once again, similar to Shiki, these guys offer the Straw Hats interesting scenarios because of the characterization they've been granted by Oda. And what's more is this film from top to bottom has been gorgeous, with terrific animation both from an action standpoint, comedic standpoint, and a character acting standpoint. Zoro and Sanji specifically get a lot of opportunity when it comes to comedic and action moments, which is another amazing part of why I love these characters. The fact that Sanji can jump from a comedic approach to a breakneck action in the blink of an eye is is a testament to just what a fantastic character he is. And even though Zoro has a much more stoic one-note persona, that very aspect of his personality is utilized for comedic effect quite often in the series too. And these fight scenes they participate in are fantastic, but the fight that receives the most love and attention comes from Luffy versus Shiki. I really like how Luffy is motivated by Nami's message even more than he normally would be, taking specific issue with her not believing in him and trusting him. That very rage and anger that Luffy is feeling comes through in this film in a massive, and I mean emphasis on massive, with Luffy in conjunction with the storm brewing in the sky, utilizes the fact electricity can't hurt him and lands a massive thunder charge kick onto Shiki that ultimately takes him out of the entire film. The storyboard sets up this to look fittingly massive and intimidating, truly an attack worthy of the King of the Pirates. Overall, I honestly loved this film. It's got action but doesn't use it as a crutch, has a specific story it wants to tell, does it brilliantly, has a great set of antagonists, and has such a wonderful sense of humor with an atmosphere that is distinctly One Piece, specifically at the end when the rest of Nami's message is revealed. She never gave up hope, she always believed in them to rescue her. Needless to say, I highly recommend everyone check out this movie. Straw Hat Chase. When I was composing this list of films I had to watch and review for these videos, the 2011, less than half an hour long, 3D film entitled Straw Hat Chase was a piece of media I was particularly excited to watch, specifically because I thought it was going to be awful to an almost absurd degree. Weird 3D models, less than half an hour long to tell a story, and a title that reads as though it comes from a children's book, Straw Hat Chase was a venture I was certain would give me a chance to flex my inner critic much more than I had in the past with this series. There's a butt coming. But I was totally wrong. Totally unlike the artistically bankrupt, underproduced, corporate sludge I was expecting this to be, Straw Hat Chase was brimming with character, made full use of its 3D nature with, dare I say it, gorgeous tracking shots, and what's more is, it has a perfectly nice story that, while not big in scope, leans into the emotional aspects of One Piece instead, which offers it much more impact than anything like this had any right to have. Essentially, the story covers the antics of a particular pooch acting on behalf of his dying master to retrieve Luffy's straw hat. Thinking it to be an impossible mission, he thought it should keep his beloved pet busy while he himself dies of old age. It's a sad angle to tackle this story from, but it's uplifted again as as we see the humor that ensues when Luffy himself becomes more and more frantic, looking everywhere for his prized possession. Throughout the short runtime of this film, the Marines become involved, there's a massive chase, some surprisingly fun action with humor, and an emotional core, the likes of which I wasn't even remotely expecting. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Straw Hat Chase is a film you should totally check out. It's only like 25 minutes, so it's not a big time sink either. The next and final three films, Film Z, Film Gold, and Stampede, are movies I watched 
watched all on the same day. I enjoyed all of them, though each for very different reasons, with one I enjoyed less than the other two. So let's take a look. Let's jump in with Film Z. The very first thing that stood out to me in Film Z was its villain. Normally visuals catch my attention first, but at this point in history, One Piece is making more money than the Monopoly Man, and thus I expect all these modern films to look spectacular, sporting a masterful implementation of 2D practices with some 3D thrown in to seamlessly enhance background special effects and, in some cases, character art. And this film does all of that as I expected to a very high standard. However, what did interest me was its exploration into the tragic backstory of a disillusioned, estranged one-time naval admiral. Z is introduced to us as this determined, no-nonsense brute with a moral outlook he adheres to, to an almost pathological extent. Though that doesn't mean we don't appreciate his struggles and point of view, through flashbacks, character interactions, and his own exposition, we come to learn his origin and the events that made him the cold killer he is today. What I found particularly interesting about him, however, is that while he commands the screen with the intent of a typical brooding tough guy, he very clearly has physical limitations made evident through his inhaler, his arm, and his age, reinforcing the notion that he is a grizzled old man that could very well be past the days where he should be fighting. But this old man views his goals as worthy of dying for, which is a really intense villain to have or lighthearted but determined crew to fight against, specifically because this Z guy right here wants to rid the world of pirates, with their very first ever interaction coloring this contradiction and complexity of the story really well. Luffy and the Straw Hats are pirates, pirates that save Z's life as they discover him as he lies motionless in the sea below. Initially grateful for this rescue, as soon as he learns who they are, a massive fight breaks out with some terrific animation incorporating his crew and the Straw Hats in battle. On top of there being a cool factor to a lot of these initial interactions, there's a healthy emphasis on the comedy in these exchanges too, with a specific highlight being the grass knots tying everyone up. This particular battle is interesting too, as Robin, Nami, Brooke, and Chopper all fall victim to the evil fruit's power of one of his subordinates that makes everyone 12 years younger. It's a cool what-if scenario, and it's neat getting to see all of these characters either as children or in Robin's case, as an 18-year-old girl. And of course, Brooke, who hasn't changed at all. Yeah! Yeah! The plot itself doesn't have as many moving parts as something like Strong World had. Effectively, we get introduced to the villain, he meets and scuffles with the Straw Hats, he inflicts damage, they look for more information about him so they can find him again, they find him again, he then wins the second fight and causes even more damage. This time, taking Luffy's hat, and then, the third and final time, they clash, Luffy and his crew win the day. However, breaking down this film like that does a disservice to what this film is focusing on and what the film is trying to achieve. While not being complex on a plot level, the theme and character moments and exchanges explored and expressed in this film are easily its strongest suit and perhaps the strongest in all of these films. While I personally found Shiki to be a more enjoyable character to watch Luffy go toe to toe with, that's just a taste thing. And Z offers Luffy an extremely different but equally if not more complex and interesting dynamic. You might have noticed at this point that I've spoken at length about Z, the antagonist of this film, and that's with good reason. He is, in my opinion, the best part of this movie. The action is great, and I love the Straw Hats, but the tragic philosophy and damage disillusionment Z brings to the table, painting every pirate as a traitor to humanity and in dire need of an exterminator, is something that Luffy, pardon the pun, always bounces well off of in both a dialogue and action situation. Z is a tormented and depressed character that by the end, I was massively sympathetic for. And through a specific flashback, as well as through Garp's own monologue, we learn about his past and how he slowly over time became more and more disillusioned as a result. He's clearly a man that has had a life wrought with struggle, tragedy, and loss driven seemingly at this point only by the sole desire to see all pirates fall. His body is giving up on him, his arm is missing, he uses an inhaler and he clearly is suppressing his emotions through drinking. Heck, he has a subordinate that could very easily return him to his youth, but he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to live. He just wants to see this mission he has in his head through to the end and that's harrowing. It's a sad set of circumstances with sympathy eventually coming from both sides the pirates and the navy's higher ups. What's more is that this film does a fantastic job at integrating pre-existing characters in Garp and other very important naval HQ higher ups as they comment on past events relevant to the film as well as the man they grew up with, Inzi. In addition to that, the world building isn't a large focus in most of the story taking place on a small island, but we also get to see Water 7's training operation, which is always cool. And
And overall, I can totally see how this is so many people's favorite One Piece film to date. It's got perhaps the most complex and interesting villain a One Piece movie has had thus far, some brilliant dynamics between characters, some fun comedy and powers on display, and the stakes are on a fittingly large scale, causing admirals of the Navy to get involved, even former admirals like Okiji. In other words, this film, it feels like a big deal through and through. From an action standpoint, things are pretty much as you'd expect, top tier, specifically in the final act. Zoro, Luffy, and Sanji's fight scenes incorporate 3D effects and character models seamlessly into action, creating fight scenes that are honestly breathtaking. Some of the very best in the series, I think. And this is coming from someone that hates 3D animation in his anime usually. But I think it works in this film because it's clear that it's not being used as a crutch. They are doing everything they normally would do with bonkers traditional animation while using the 3D effects to elevate it further. And I think that's a massive distinction that needs to be made. But with that said, it brings me to the ending of this film. <laughs> Music isn't necessarily something I feel comfortable speaking on just yet because it's not really my forte, but the implementation of music in this film is so emotionally rich, it simply begged me to give it a shot. There's this sailor song that's sung by Okiji and hummed throughout this film, and at the end it acts as Z's song he says goodbye with. He's a broken man that's just too far gone, and having played a large role in the lives of the admirals today, he decides to give them one last training session. All the while the song plays in the background, this track effectively acts as the leitmotif of Z and his struggles. With him coming full circle now, accepting his fate, it's a tragically sad scene and of all of the films, is one of the few that brought me to tears. Overall, One Piece Film Z is a powerful, action-packed and emotionally rich drama-filled ride that is fun but also forces you to contend with darker subject matters. It is without question a movie that I highly recommend anyone to check out. Film Gold. One Piece Film Gold is a strange film, but not in a bad way. I thought it was really interesting watching One Piece give their own interpretation on a more American culture, specifically Las Vegas, and it's a pretty fun and engaging setting to boot. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that in the case of environment and establishing its world, this film does it better than any other film in the One Piece series. That, and there are so many characters in this movie that speak random pieces of English, it's honestly pretty funny. With that said, this film also boasted a perfect introduction, completely capturing the vibe of its story, the environment, and the characters involved, and how? Through song. The big bad of this film goes full Disney villain and complete with a full song and dance number, gets across his motivations and personality superbly. And with the Straw Hats approaching, they get doused in a golden snow-like flake substance and that's when we see it. The most massive ship in the entire series, perhaps even bigger than Thriller Bark. A golden, shining ship, clearly taking inspiration from gambling capitals of the world, like Las Vegas, as I said. As mentioned prior also, the world building and establishment of the world has to be the best out of the series of films for me. We see cars and how they work, we see how people live, their buildings, the political and sociological structures, and the big boat has a golf course. Traditionally speaking, the story itself is fairly standard, at least when it comes to these films. The gang go to a place, the place appears to be fine until something bad happens, and then Luffy punches someone really hard to fix it. That's essentially this film, but there's a little more going on than just that too. The art direction once again is really fun, and the Straw Hats get different costume changes with new spiffy outfits. Luffy be rocking that shirt! It also makes great use of the 3D effects in swooping one shots to emphasize how massive the area truly is. However, once on the boat, cracks begin to form on the surface of this seemingly happy society as street urchins start begging for money and pushing their products onto the Straw Hat crew. This is primarily the theme of this film, and I'm not sure I'd go as far as to say that this film is anti-capitalist, I mean, Nami is still a character that wants money more than life itself, though I do think a very pronounced aspect of the story deals with how those in power can squash the aspirations and opportunities of others if they lack the resources. With that very character obsessed with money being the main antagonist himself, I mean, he sang about that very aspect of himself at the beginning, he really does help to reinforce the themes of this film. and. Really, that's what I enjoyed about it, how the themes dictated the plot. And this, in part, is largely what makes the villain in this film so engaging. Everything that makes him who he is, from his philosophy to his morals, it all dictates everything in the plot and everything about what makes this ship and, in effect, the world 
look the way it does. He has the power to control and manipulate gold, and because the entire boat is essentially casted in gold, the ship is effectively completely under his control. And really, the Straw Hats are none the wiser to the circumstances they are walking into until they end up losing their money in one big fell swoop before being cast into slavery. You see, what's interesting here is that has a subordinate that can literally take the luck away from anyone and thus, in effect, rigs Luffy's bet to lose. And really, once they get caught up in the enslavement, the battles start to get the ball rolling onto the third act. Of these fights, by far and away, my favorite was Luffy versus This thing is given time to breathe, and boy does it go on for a while. And I mean that in a good way. The way this storyboard powerfully frames as this massive imposing figure with Luffy looking on tiny as he is no doubt facing a massive task in overcoming these insurmountable odds, all in an effort to liberate the people of this massive ship. There's some really nice strategy in play too as Luffy uses seawater to cover the top of the ship, effectively making use of the Devil Fruit's adverseness to seawater in an effort to loosen the grip as on his ship. And boy, does this work. It's great. Effectively removing the gaudy golden facade, leaving behind a gray and decrepit husk beneath. Everything about the villain is surface level, and despite us getting context for how he came to be who he was, it's too little too late, and wham bam, thank you ma'am! Luffy utilizes Gear 4, crushes this golden golem, liberating the ship and freeing everyone. Overall, I actually like this film way more than I expected to. Despite not having seen any of these films prior, I did go in with expectations due to the conversations surrounding them online. I knew Film Z was going to be amazing, but the impression I got from the community on this one was that it was supposed to be mediocre, but I actually ended up really enjoying it. I found it to be a solid story, phenomenally well animated, utilizing great 3D effects, and the themes really carried a ton of the weight in this feature. In addition to that, the film also boasts what I believe to be the best setting for one of these films to be set in. I mean, I swear, if I see another wasteland fight on a random island, I'm gonna pull my hair out, so that was fun too. All in all, I totally recommend recommend checking this film out. Stampede. Stampede is a 2019 film that is effectively wall-to-wall -wall nostalgia and fan service, which is both a great and a bad thing. Of all the films I've seen, visually this film sports my favorite art style. The thicker lines look phenomenal. Personally, I've always hated those thin digital lines so many animated shows have today, so this was a welcome change. In addition to that, the animation in this film is brilliant also, for the most part. Like most of these films, the premise is revealed to us almost immediately with the Straw Hats announcing that they are on their way to a pirate fest to participate in a treasure hunt. They arrive in the town and not even 10 minutes into the film, as Buggy the Clown comes crashing into the picture, we begin to get a sense that this film will try to cram as many characters from new and old One Piece into it as it possibly can. Some are incredibly welcome, like Buggy and Law, but others, like the Foxy Pirates and King Wapple, are there for essentially no other reason than for to make the movie say, Hey guys, look! Reference! But perhaps that's being unfair. This is honestly way more fun than it is annoying, so I'll let it slide. The pacing of this film, too, is honestly quite good, specifically towards the first half as as there really isn't a dull moment to be seen. Between reintroductions and cameos from old characters to breakneck races and capital A action, there's more fighting in this movie than the actual movie, and I mean that in a good way. The story itself is probably the most simple I've seen in a long while, which isn't by default a bad thing, but what's more is that this film also incorporates the worst antagonists of these modern One Piece films, in my opinion. This gentleman, initially released and discovered in Impel Down by Blackbeard, is effectively effectively everything I mentioned that I dislike about the prior older films. He doesn't provide Luffy or anyone really with much of anything to converse with, he's got virtually no personality and his backstory isn't revealed until the movie is almost over. Apart from being a massively powerful individual, he doesn't really offer the story much or at least not that I saw. And with the story being extremely simple in that they arrive on an island, they encounter the bad guy and now have to defeat him, the fact that he doesn't have much to him really made the film feel less important than it should have considering how much it has going for it. Despite seeing footage of Roger and other massively important individuals within the One Piece world present in this feature, the story felt small and this antagonist felt virtually unimportant. Even though from a historical standpoint and plot level, he is super important. But by far and away, the worst aspect of this film comes in the form of the facade he assumes during the final fight. With all the wonderful CGI used in all of these films, including this one that I've praised, this 3D model is one of the worst I've seen. 
and with it being such a predominant part of this film, I thought they could have done a much better job. One Piece Movie 4 from 2003 had better 3D effects. And this Stampede film is from 2019, I don't see the excuse here. But that's pretty much everything I dislike about this movie right off the bat, so let's talk about what I liked because there's honestly plenty about it that I loved. As mentioned prior, there's a lot of fighting in this film, like, people gave Dragon Ball Super Broly a really hard time for being almost half fighting, but I swear, this film is like 80% fighting. Personally, I was never one of those people that belittled Broly for having too much fighting, and I won't be one here in this film either, because the action is honestly some of the best in the series with some gorgeous colors and, of course, storyboarding. And on top of that, everyone fights in this film. Usopp, Sanji, Robin, Zoro has some incredible moments. Nami, Brook, Chopper. Super! We got Fujitora, Smoker, various admirals, Luchi, Crocodile, and even Sabo in all of his fiery glory. This is really a greatest hits of One Piece if ever I did see one. However, my favorite aspect of this film comes in the form of the treasure hunt incentive, and more specifically, the treasure itself. An eternal pose that leads to none other than the end of the Grand Line. Laugh Tale, home of the fabled One Piece treasure owned once by Gold D. Roger. Now, if that's not a prize you want, I don't know what is, and well, the conflict here comes obviously from the big bad, but also everyone including the Navy threatening to blow up the island in order to get the ultimate prize, that eternal pose. With so many factions, crews, and naval personnel fighting in this film, it honestly gave me endgame vibes with how many callbacks there were and how many unlikely team-ups we got to see. And once Luffy does win the day and finally gets his hand on the internal pose, leading to his dream, I might add, in an effort to stop the fighting, he crushes the log pose and puts an end to all of it, citing that since he's going to be the king of the pirates, he doesn't need this eternal pose, that he will find it on his own. And as he says this, Boa Hancock swoons in the corner. I love that rationale with Luffy prioritizing the safety of others while also highlighting his determination to get to the end of his own dreams on his own terms. It reinforces his character and was one of, if not the best character moments in the entire film, with his only competition in this specific department coming in the form of Usopp. In this movie, Usopp is awesome. I might have liked it so much because it's been a while since I've seen Usopp do much of anything within Wano. However, in this film, he does, and really it's thanks to him that the big bad is actually taken down in the end amazingly. On top of Usopp's laments during this film over how he felt as though he wasn't strong enough to contribute, he once again finds solace in helping from afar as a sniper, reinforcing the themes of friendship alongside the theme we are. Luffy deals the final blow leading to chills running down my spine as well as a tear filling my eye. But perhaps the most interesting part of the film comes at the very, very end, when we're greeted by a flashback to Gold D. Roger talking about the One Piece treasure, citing he was too early. What does that mean? The highs of this film surpass many of the other films for me, but unlike the other films in this video specifically, it feels less like a story, but more like a spectacle, and I personally really enjoyed that part, but the villain just really didn't do it for me. With that said, if someone were to tell me that this was their favorite film, I could see why. There's a lot to like, but with that said, it's time to rank these films. Of the five films I've discussed today, my favorite is perhaps a toss-up between Strong World and Film Z. Though I think personally I had more fun watching Strong World as it had a more complicated story that I could sink my teeth into. With that said, I think Film Z was the most emotionally powerful of these films, so I guess it all depends on how I'm feeling. Currently, it's Strong World, but that could very easily change by the day. Regarding the others, I didn't really dislike any of these films. I just disliked some more than others, and that one that I I disliked more than the others was perhaps Stampede. I'd personally still rank it way higher than the other films if I were to take what I liked out and remove the bad parts like the boring villain, but if I'm being fair, I personally enjoyed Film Gold more on a first watch. However, not by much. Stampede offered significantly higher highs than Film Gold did, so once again, if you were to ask me which my favorite between the two were, on another day, it could very easily result in a different answer, but for now, I preferred Film Gold to Stampede. And finally, given that Straw Hat Chase isn't a feature film by definition, it's way too short. I'm gonna put it in a separate category into and of itself. I think that's fair. Plus, I really enjoyed it. With that said, that concludes my review of the One Piece films. I hope you had fun, and I can't wait to review the moral arc of Dragon Ball Super at the end of the month. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and now it's time for the One Piece specials. Wish me luck, 
I've been Toy Not Mark. I love you all, and thank you so much for watching.